Ah, what a nice day to record some videos. Let's just check out some of the comments on my videos and see how everyone enjoyed them. Oh. Oh, oh wow. What is going on guys? My name is John and welcome back to yet another video. I made a video about a month ago about transferring Pokemon to previous generations that for some reason has been gaining a lot of traction. A large majority of the comments on that video are about the fact that I didn't use the swap boxes option to send all the Pokemon over to the games. Well, today is the day. Fasten your seatbelts because things are about to get weird. What we're going to do is send some of the Pokemon that I had in the previous video, as well as some Pokemon that you suggested in the comments. For those who didn't watch the previous video, we're going to use a program called PKSM. Essentially what this program does is give you a free Pokemon bank to store your Pokemon. In older versions of the program, you were able to switch the boxes to send any Pokemon to any game. These versions require resources to be downloaded in order to get the program to start, so I wasn't able to use them. However, I found a workaround in the newest version that will let us do what we want. So, let's get started. First, let's start out with the Pokemon that we're using for our experiment. Our first Pokemon is Young Goose. This is a Generation 7 Pokemon, so I'm curious what will happen when we put it into the game. Our second Pokemon is a Lolan Golem. My best guess is that the game will just convert it into a regular Golem, but since it didn't do it in the last video, that one's up in the air for me. Our third Pokemon is going to be Heatmore. This person suggested that we should try it out with a Gen 7 exclusive move, so we'll see what happens with that one. The fourth was another common suggestion. I was told to try out one of Zygarde's alternative forms, so I chose the 10% form. Next is Zerkatree. A big suggestion that I had was to see if the Pokemon caught in a beast ball would make any difference. I have a bad feeling this is going to crash the game, but I'll give it a go. Lastly, we have Donwing's Necrozma. I just wanted to see if a fusion Pokemon might break apart when you send them through. Okay, so now I have my copy of Alpha Sapphire in. If we go to the bank and I press the switch boxes button on the top right of the bottom screen, you can see that only Heatmore and Zygarde will switch. This was the problem that I was having the last time. Because you can't use most of the older versions, I found out that if you hover swap the Pokemon, they're forced to go into the game. Now that we've really broken the rules, let's see the results. Alright, so on startup, the first thing I notice is the game comes up with a weird communication error. I'm pretty sure that's my capture card acting up, but I haven't seen that issue before. Anyways, let's head to the PC and see what they look like. Uh, okay. Well, I see a lot of interesting things here, so let's just put them in a party to get a better look. Ah, okay, and so that crashes the game. I completely forgot that I had an item from the newer games attached to Necrozma, which would explain why it crashed. So I guess we'll forget about that then, because I think the results are going to be the same as the other Gen 7s anyways. The first big thing I noticed is that Young Goose, Zerkatree, and Necrozma all have Pokeballs as their sprites. A little weird, but I would guess that this is the original placeholder for Pokemon sprites in early developments of the game. In addition, our Lolan Golem now has the regular Golem sprite, and Zygarde is now in its 50% form. Well, let's start with Young Goose and see what it looks like. Okay, it's a Bulbasaur now but it still has the name Young Goose. The moveset is exactly the same and everything else looks correct. I'd also like to point out that its cry is Rotoms, not Bulbasaur's. Let's move on to the next one. Like I said earlier, Golem is now, well, Golem. The only difference now is that it has Thunder Punch. Pretty solid type coverage if you ask me. So, looking at Heatmore, everything looks pretty normal, except for the fact that its exclusive move is now replaced with a blank 0pp slot. It doesn't have any information either. When we look at Zygarde, it has the same thing, but funny enough, Thousand Arrows and Waves still show up in the game, even though they weren't actually available in the game at all. And Zerkatry is now also a Bulbasaur. And it has what I believe is Meloetta's Cry? And for some reason, it's now level 94 instead of 88. 
Unfortunately, it looks like the beast ball just turned into a regular Pokeball, but there's only one real way to find out. Let's check him out in battle. Alright, so let's see what happens now. So, we're gonna start from the top with our young goose. And yep, that's a Bulbasaur. With Rotom's Cry. Nothing else is really special about this one. We've already seen it all. But how about Golem? Kinda seems like it's the same deal. I feel like Heatmore will be somewhat promising with the invisible move though. Okay, well I guess I was wrong. It doesn't do anything. I even tried being sneaky and using an Ether, but that didn't work either. Zygarde looks just like its regular sprite, but its invisible move is now just a forward slash. If we go into the summary of Heatmore, it now changes his move to just the male gender symbol. Leave a comment below as what you think both of these moves would do if they actually worked. Zerkatry acts the same way as Young Goose, so we've got that one out of the way. But we're not done yet. What happens if you level up Young Goose to Bulbasaur's evolution level? Let's head to Victory Road to find out. During the process of leveling it up, I found out that although Thousand Arrows is a ground type move, it still hits Golbat. I'm, I'm not really sure on that one. Okay, so Young Goose is now past level 16, so we'll see if anything happens. Nothing. But Young Goose evolves at level 20, could that work? Also no. Well, that sucks, but fortunately we have one last thing we can do. What happens if we send the Pokémon back? Now that we're in Ultra Moon, I've already gone through the process of throwing them back into the game, so let's see. Believe it or not, they're all back to their original forms. And somehow Zerkatry is back down to level 88 again. So let's recap. When you transfer Gen 7 Pokemon, they will turn into Bulbasaur Sprite, but will have a completely different and possibly random cry. Any foreign item will freeze the game, and all unknown moves are replaced with random characters and they can't be used. Any Pokemon with alternate forms go to their old ones, but are restored when you send them back. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe as I'll be putting out more content like this in the near future. I want to thank each and every one of you for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. I never thought my channel would turn into a community of people as dedicated as you all are, and I'm really excited to see what's in store for 2018. Hopefully this video will help patch all the holes I left in my original video. If there's anything cool that I missed, leave it in the comments below. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.